teacher was telling about actually not one note exercise, but one note is down and another one, uh, two notes pressed silently in the effect of overtones. So it's very uh, comfortable for me to hear that and reassuring for me to hear it because I know we all do these kind of things, right? And so I just want to somehow you know, to have this collective spirit and maybe brainstorm together. What else can we do? With help? How else can we reach a broader audience? Because you know, when I was talking to my students about that last Thursday, uh, uh, one of them she said, "We have we play for each other. Usually we play for each other. I wish more people from outside would come." <laughs> She's right, and she said that your friends she has friends in music and they love music, but somehow they don't like piano recitals. So I don't know what's wrong with piano recitals. She said your friends prefer to go to orchestra concerts. Colors and more different instruments, and of course everybody loves opera, and that is because, of course, on stage there's always a story, a drama. Somebody kills somebody, somebody loves somebody, you know, and people are dressed up, you know. There are always costumes and decoration, so it's a show. Plus, people have a description of what's going on, so they basically know what's going on. And as I said in my presentation. When we know what's going on, when we understand, it's much more enjoyable. So I guess if people don't come to our events, it's just because they're probably afraid that they're not going to understand what we are presenting to them. So what can we do? What do you think? Do you have any ideas? Yes. You could like have certain pieces that before people play them, you know, you just talk about the whole piece. You know, to the audience, yeah. I think that it would be a responsibility of the person performing the piece. You know. Well, you know, very often there are program notes which actually <laughs> give this information. What you mean? Like maybe about like their own interpretation of it. Oh. You know, like mm -hmm. what they think a certain you know part of the music is, or I don't know. It gives it more of a personal. Yes. Feel. Why not? Why not? That's a good idea. Great idea. I'm going to do that next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just it off. <laughs> I would say have really great door prizes, and you have to at the end of the recital. <laughs> so they don't leave yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're giving away an iPad at the end of the recital. Like, okay, <laughs> Have some additional 
images, it just comes to you, you know, as they say, if music is made from the heart, it just reaches anybody who would reach anyone, yes, please. So you're saying, is it more about the performer than it is about the piece? <laughs> Definitely. You know, a good performer can make a gem out of some trash and music, and vice versa. <laughs> 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 whichever is whichever is my husband. <laughs> I'm saying, definitely. That's what I keep saying to my students every time you're on stage. You've got to give. That's the nature of our profession. We give all the time. The gift of music. We share who we are. We give energy. So someone who performed must have a very high, unusually high level of energy. If you will be watching Evelyn Glennie on YouTube, the woman I showed you this morning, you'll be amazed. And she shows in, during her presentation how it may sound if she plays as an ordinary musician. And she goes like one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. And she said, that's, if I play like that, my career will probably last five years. And she said, and now I'll play as an artist. And she goes, Ding, and the amount of energy is unbelievable. And she says, well, now I think my career will last a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> and she's absolutely right. So I guess when we deal with the music, to me, it's very important the energy I have, okay? And how to train that, it's a very tricky question, but first we have to demand it from ourselves and from our students. You know, if you play something and you feel like you're bored, or you do it, but uh, you're, you're not getting this excitement from the music, obviously, you know, your level of energy is not there. So that's why sometimes we do an exercise um, to bring the energy level up. And this exercise, like, um, actors, they like doing that. And it's called an imaginary line. It's in my handouts, but I didn't show it today. So, you know, in acting, when people act, they also get bored sometimes because they have to memorize text and they have to do it evening after evening, especially if it's the theater. And uh, when they have the level, level, energy level down, what they do, they get together, all of them, and they have an imaginary line on the floor, and they stand here, like ordinary life, and they say, okay, if we cross the line, it's a fairy tale, it's a different life, it's a life with lots of energy, and once I'm there, I'm receiving it from the universe, and I'm changing, and I feel it, and then they step, and, you know, and they try to pretend to feel very energy, and then they go back, and then they go back and forth, back and forth, and hopefully, you know, it will help. But this question of energy, where do we get it, how do we get it, how to develop it, it personally, bugs me all the time, because that's what I want from my students. Every time they play, I want energy. I don't want them to report on the music, because, you know, there's a reading and there is an interpretation, okay? And when we interpret something, it has to be highly energetic. Mm -hmm. Yes? I mean, but can you teach that, though? I mean, that energy comes from the passion that they have with the music. Yes. You know? Of they course you can. Yeah. Everybody falls in love, in, in love once in a while, right? And becomes passionate once in a while, right? Everybody, or everybody has some things they like, you know, or things they do in a fashion level. And so even music, of course we can, it's not that we can entirely teach it, but we can encourage that. And we can demand it. I literally demand it, you know. Like you can ask Yuri, she played today the dances, um, and you, she can tell you, did I demand the energy from you every time? I would tell her, no, you can do more, and go for more, and go for more. You know? <laughs> and I literally, you know, try to pull it out from her. Uh, a tribute to Aerosmith, and they had cover bands. Well, not, that sounds right, but they had like Chris Rock and other people, famous performers in their own right, interpret their music. Well, this one girl was doing White Lady, and she was doing great. She was fine. I thought, oh yeah, she's doing all right. Well, she climbs up. Uh, into the box where the band was, and and got up by Steve Perry, and he took her to school. His energy so eclipsed anything that she did; it was unbelievable. And then you knew why they were doing a tribute to him and what made him special. And there were some. 
people who I thought were doing a pretty good job of interpreting their songs, and the band just sat there like this. And then there were other people who did their songs, and they started going like this. And, and they thought, you know, it, it took me to school. It was just like, come on. Yeah, because it's one thing when you just do it, and it's a different thing when you live through that. Yeah. And I guess your energy comes out much more when you live through this experience, when you don't just do soft or loud, but you actually live through the dynamics, you know? Because mm -hmm. uh, intensity, which could be produced, it's, it's all about, you know, living through that. And how can you do that through the imagination? Because some things are just not happening in your life. Richard, well, I was going to suggest that, you know, one of the things that we may have to do, at least if we're talking with our own studios, more realistic sense, that um, I find that if I post a student's uh, performance on YouTube, I have created a YouTube channel for my studio, and it'll be amazing because that student may get 145 hits, whereas I've never had 145 people in any of my student recitals. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think, you know, actually you find that you're reaching a bigger audience, and, and granted, those are probably his family members, which well, you just are his grandma, you know. <laughs> They can't do anything Monday through Friday from, you know, four until seven. Uh, that sometimes these sort of different alternative venues, and I also create YouTube list, listening lists for my students, for them to, uh, you know, listen to this, this, and this, and I actually create the list and send it to them rather than have them just say, oh, go listen to such and such a high and sonata, yeah. and um, I actually pick the performer, and, and so I usually pick someone who's more energized. And I think you can expose and educate your students to have a broader appreciation, and then hopefully that will translate to attending live concerts. Yes. Well, makes sense, makes sense. Well, think about this. Um, in March of 1839, okay, Franz Liszt was in Rome, and he was supposed to play in one of those concerts, and at this time, uh, every concert was supposed to be finished with two or three singers, okay? And here was Franz Liszt waiting for the singers to come, but they didn't show up. And what he did, he finished up with his own music. And that's the day when the piano recital was born. And again, it was in 1839. And since then, the format hasn't been changed, right? We still have the same settings, white and black. The same lighting on stage never changes, right? We have one person, usually dressed in black. <laughs> yeah, because it's a concert attire. Okay? He or she comes up on stage, and as you said, not saying anything, okay? smiling, playing, going back. Okay? We've been keeping it for more than 150 years. I'm sure if Franz Liszt was alive today, he himself would change it. Because he loved technology, you're absolutely right, technology is great, right? He loved changes, he was following all those new things on market. He would bring, uh, I'm not sure how to correctly label this, but um, the opera they were taking pictures with, uh, what was it, the photo machine maybe? The he magnesium, bring, it's flush. Yeah, the, the one with the flush, he would bring it into his master classes, because as you know, he also established the format of master classes, which we still follow. He was the first to do that, right? And so he would use the photo machine and he would do different things just to, uh, people would not get asleep, students would not get asleep. And so sometimes during the master class, he would take a picture and go, and you know, this smoke and steam, and not to mention noise. And that's during someone playing maybe his little struggle. <laughs> So, he was very unpredictable, but what I'm saying, maybe if we think a little bit, if we become a little more daring in what we do, you know, and Richard is so right, technology is there and available, and I'm not saying we should be like 
uh, or pop stars, you know. Although, you know, if you watch Lady Gaga's clip, you know, <laughs> you you'll be very impressed with visuals and the way everything is done, you know. And even Lan Blanc, you all know the Chinese players. He will be playing in Lexington tomorrow. Tickets are like ninety dollars each. Unbelievable. Yes, yes. You know, the piano machine worked really well for him. You know, when other pianists they come to Lexington, we barely know about them. But Lan Blanc, when he comes tomorrow, everybody knows and, uh, you know, they they have to milk us for money, you know, because his fee is probably astronomical, okay? But even, you know, I was watching him play in Shanghai, and he was using some light effects as well, and why not? We never use them. I use them myself when I play, especially when I played Scrabbing, and I must tell you, it changed the way I felt about the music. It was a magnificent feeling. You could appreciate Scrabbing's music even more because of all those changes. So, well, here we have all performers. Hello. Hello. Well, so it's time to start, but um, I guess if you'll think in this direction, and, and if we could get together more often so we could brainstorm. Yes, you had one point before. Well, more than just lightning, I mean, like, a lot of the, uh, you know, audio technology and stuff, like, mm -hmm. you're playing a storm, why not have a storm playing behind you, you know? Uh, as you just, play behind us another? Yeah, you know, <laughs> like you could have like the sounds of, you know, lightning or thunder and, you know. Definitely, yeah, that's what I'm saying, you are a new generation, you know? This, this time is yours, okay? Yeah, that's my message to you. Come up with something, do something. Because when I said it in class, in my class, uh, one student said, well, when Franz Liszt, when he was there, everything was easier because people could just follow what he was doing. Maybe we should just wait to be closer to person to appear again. <laughs> yes, go ahead. You, you had no, 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 no. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing your ideas. And again, thank you so much for your feedback after the, uh, my talk, after my presentation. I really, truly appreciate it.